We've just had uh, some remarkable, uh, remarkably open information from Moscow uh, on what they believe phase two of their invasion or their limited military operation, as they call it, will look like. They have said that once they capture the Donbass, this uh, large area in the far east of Ukraine, uh, that will give them a land bridge to Crimea. Uh, they say that they will encircle uh, um, Mariupol, the city that we've talked about for so long, uh, and then that they will push west, uh, that they hope to create a land bridge to Transnistria. Now, Transnistria is to the northwest of Odessa. Uh, it's part of Moldova, a separate country, but it is a breakaway part of Moldova, which is already aligned to Russia. Now, this is really interesting stuff. Transnistria already has a, a unit of around about a 1,000 Russian soldiers who are based permanently there. Combine that with, uh, with Transnistrians who are aligned with Russia as well. Uh, and there is, for Putin, a a friendly force uh, within that breakaway part of Moldova. Um, so this is uh, pretty alarming stuff. I think it, um, it's worth remembering uh, that what Putin intends to do and what he is capable of doing are, are two different things, and that much has been proven uh, by the disastrous uh, efforts that the, uh, that the Russians had uh, when they tried to take Kiev in the early stages of this war. But I've just spoken to sources in Kisinau, the capital of Moldova, uh, and they confirm what, what I discovered when I was there a few weeks ago, which is that Moldovans are very, very nervous. They believe that if Putin has the ability to push into Transnistria uh, or indeed to Moldova proper, then he will. Moldova is not a member of NATO. Uh, it, it, um, it feels at the moment very vulnerable indeed. So th this, this plan appears appears to be to create a land bridge right across the south of the country uh, to isolate cities like Odessa uh, and Mariupol uh, and, and Meritopol as well, those cities along the south, uh, and, uh, and create this land bridge. As I say, the, 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 the will is there, the ability of the Russians to do that, well, well perhaps not. And Mark, you're talking to us from Zaporizhia. What is the situation on the ground there? Well, this is the town where all those who are trying to escape those cities in, in the south of the country uh, um, try to get to. They, they try to get into uh, Ukraine proper, territory that is not occupied by Russia. Uh, and they are arriving in dwindling numbers, it has to be said, because it is harder and harder to get out. And what struck us here is that nowhere is safe uh, in Ukraine. There were uh, air raid sirens through the course of the day yesterday. We haven't actually heard uh, any today, or at least I haven't. Uh, I think there have been a couple. Um, but the missiles that the Russians are firing are hitting towns like this as well. We visited uh, a sanatorium here on, a, on an island that, that is in the middle uh, of the river that, that cuts this city in half. Uh, that was hit uh, yesterday by a, a Russian cruise missile. Eight people were injured. The railway line runs very close to that sanatorium over the island. And we are told by the Ukrainians that at the time an evacuation train was on that track uh, and that the windows were smashed in uh, by the cruise missile that hit nearby. We don't know why the Russians decided to strike that particular point. There is military on the island, um, but it just gives a, a sense that nowhere is safe uh, in this country at the moment.